Hi, today I'd like to show you how to have a little bit of fun. I'm using some 10 inch squares and I'm going to be doing a fusible Hawaiian style applique just to show you how we can cut out some patterns. You can draw your own. It's lots of fun to do something like this. So I'm using batik cloth because when I do fusible applique I find that it doesn't fray as much as some other cotton so it works really well for that purpose. So I have here some 10 inch squares of fabric um, but to start off doing the pattern we need a piece of paper um, and I'm going to start with a 10 inch square of piece of paper and really it's a very fun little process. I'm sure many of us did this sort of thing making little snowflakes and things when we were children. So I'm just going to fold that piece of paper in half and then I'm going to fold it in half again and then I'm going to fold it again so that we've got all these different foldy lines but then what we can do is have a lot of fun on this we can draw a little one eighth of our design and we open, cut it out and open it out so that we end up seeing something amazing. So I don't know what it is you want to draw, you might want to draw something that's really nothing or something that's really something. Don't make it too tight and fiddly, but you might do something like that. You might want a little hole in that bit there. You might want some holes in here, but as I said, not anything too fiddly and tight. And then we, we can cut that out. So it's as simple as that, it's as fun as that, just cutting. But I'm not going to stand here cutting all of that now because I've already gone ahead and done something. I just wanted to show you that it's that simple. And when that's opened out, and this is something that's a little bit similar to that. So that was my one that I did as, as my drawing. Whoops, yes, that one. Some bits are longer on that diagonal and they'll be out in, if we look up here, you can see that this is the sort of a shorter fold bit and this is the longer diagonal fold. So some bits come right out. And uh, try and use as much as you can of your 10 inch square or as much as you feel that you'd like to use, if that's what you're going to use. So I've already got one cut out here just to show you when I've cut all that out and I open that out, we've got something that looks remarkably like that one up on the wall. So this is actually the pattern that I used to make this one. As you can see, it's, it's similar, uh, not, not ever identical because by the time you folded layers of fabric and things, things change a little bit. But that's one of the beauties of this method of work is that because nothing is right next to something else, even though it looks the same, it's only very similar and so it goes on. So really it's a folded uh, trace design, something like we used to do with snowflakes and you've got 10 inch squares of fabric, I suggest that you have 10 inch squares of the fusible web that you're going to use uh, so that you can iron it on. So what we're going to do to get that onto our fabric, and I've already got a piece ironed on here, and I've already got a shape that I'm going to use. So I had drawn this little um, shape here on my 1 8 wedge of my square, and now I'm just going to open that out to a square rather than the one eighths because when you do it onto fabric we've got a lot of bulk and it gets a little bit hard to cut through that many layers. So I'm going to fold my fabric which has got my fusible web on the back in half. I'm going to fold it in half again and I am going to do that other fold just to get the lines in so that we know where everything should be sitting. So we've got the one eighth wedge, we've got the little extra fold bits here, the thicker fold here. But because that's all so thick and particularly with the the fusible web on the back, I'm actually going to open that out to be like that and I'm going to suggest that you put it, hold it together with um, something like some clips. You could tack it down the edges there. There's lots of different ways of holding fabric together. And I'm just going to mark this. Now so I've opened this out. I had it in the 1 8 wedge but I'm going to open it out just one fold so that it's just the quarter there and it sits quite nicely on there. And now I'm going to just trace around that paper cut out onto my fusible web. Nothing terribly hard about this, it's, it's actually just a lot of fun. You could use this for all sorts of designs that you like to draw in that sort of uh, folded up shape so that you're just drawing a quarter and you get some very interesting results just by playing with things like that. So 
we're nearly done. Just do, to cut, do the little cut out. Just make sure all your lines are there. It's all looking pretty good to me. So all my tracing is there. I'm just going to put another couple of these clips in just to hold it. It will want to move, um, and you don't want it to move any more than than it really kind of has to. So, and then with some fairly sharp scissors, have some good scissors because it will help you get in and around. Sometimes things get a little bit tight, and I'm going to start cutting just here. So I'm on the folded edge here, so I'm cutting through the four layers folded. I'm going to cut this hole out while I'm here as well. If you cut any holes out, remember you do have to stitch around them, so just be aware. Um, and then I'm just going to continue on cutting this and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the other end. So I'm just finishing up this last bit of cutting. You can see I've got little clippy things everywhere. Just move them out of your way if you need to as you get to them. But it does get quite complicated. I've come in from this side as well. Cut out my little hole on that bit. And just, just to so you can see how I'm handling this. It does get a little bit fiddly and the fabric does want to move, which is why we're holding it together with those little clips. So we try and let it move as little as possible, but there will be a little bit of movement. So in fiddly tight shapes, like this one here that doesn't look especially tight, gets tighter when you've got the bulk of the fabric. But we're just about there. Just come down on that little point there. Just one little snip in there. So now this piece here we don't need unless you can think of some other use for it. Even our little holes would make petals on something else so none of it has to be wasted. And now I've gone ahead and I've got my shape here. Quite exciting when you open things out and see how they actually look in colour. And I think that's kind of fun. So I'm going to bring in, I've got some background squares to, to iron onto. So my squares that I'm making are 12 and a half inches, so they'll finish at a 12 inch block. And the same thing, we can do a little finger press line on here so that we know where we're positioning things. But you can do all of them if you want to so that you can get those diagonal pieces going out the sides so that it's sitting fairly central on your fabric. So I can see my folds here and this is going to be positioned on here and you want to be able to centre it fairly well because you don't want it kind of off to one side or or something like that and usually you can see where the folds have been and you want to line up through the centre and things like that so we've got to peel the paper off the back there now but I kind of think that's looking really fun and relatively simple which is always a good thing in my in my opinion and, and as I said you can make it more complicated just be aware that if you're going to be cutting it out in those layers that it is quite difficult to get into and it will want to move and it becomes a little bit stiff with all that paper on and the fusible as well. But not beyond the realms of possibility. Some good scissors are good. Like these scissors I'm using a perfect scissor by Karen K. Buckley. I find them excellent for so many things. And I'm just going to position that. Now if everything doesn't sit absolutely exactly that's fine, it should be just something that's pretty close and that's one of the beauties of this type of work. It is a kind of a, a folk art style and it means that you've got just a little bit of leeway for things being just a little bit off here and there. So if you're an absolute perfectionist, yours will be beautiful and if you're not quite such a perfectionist, yours will also be beautiful. Oops, it's got caught up in my iron there. there. So that's looking pretty good. And when I'm using fusible web like this I often like to iron it onto this side and then I like to flip it over and heat it also from this other side just to make sure that that glue has fused in there really well. So doing blocks like this would be a very good um, opportunity for doing some quilt as you go um, on things because 
you've got blocks, you could quilt them as they are because if you're going to do a traditional type of quilting, we're going to applique them through. We could applique through the batting and backing as well, an echo quilt, but I will come back and show you another video. I'm going to do a, um, a few videos on this topic so that I can show you a couple of different things and how to quilt them, but that will come later. So I think that's looking pretty good. We've got a couple of blocks already. I just wanted to, to mention a couple of other things. I've done another block here, and which I can pop up there as well. And I've got another one that I can... So I just want to talk about this block a little bit and I'll show you what I mean on the next little piece that I've got here. So that's kind of fun. We've got a snowflake now on the, off the fusible. We've got it on the paper so you can make them again if you want to. The other thing would be if you on this one here, which is looking a little bit more complicated because I've cut more holes, and there's also a hole in the center which I haven't got here. So I left these ones quite simple. This one's looking a little bit more involved, and so it is. This was the shape that I drew and opened out as you can see it there. So I've got the three, sort of like a half of a leaf with the little cuts through it, which gives you this nice little open sort of look. And so that's come up really nicely there. And then I've done another one that I've got ready here. And I've already cut it out, just for the fun of it. With just So this one here, the difference being that I've cut a little hole in the centre out, um, which I haven't on those. And this one also, I haven't cut a hole out. However, I've made it a little bit more complicated. So this is my piece that I've cut away. Well, there was a little bit more, but that's gone walk of that. Um, so I can just iron this one on as well, just a little bit more involved with some of the cutting. So just so that you can see, you can get obviously way more involved than even I've got. You can see some beautiful um, examples of Hawaiian style quilts that are very intricate. But for me today, we're just doing fairly simple. So this one is a, just another fun little shape. I've tried to bring in a little hints of nature, which is uh, something that the Hawaiian style would often do. So I've got a sort of a leaf design here, that sort of pineapple design here. This one, I'm not sure what that one is. This one here has got a sort of palm tree kind of look about it. So very often uh, the quilts were done very large and very nature oriented as you would probably expect from, from um, some beautiful island places. So I'm just lining this up with some finger pressed lines on the background just so that you can see how different fabrics, different colours, different cutouts can look but all relatively simple. And I think that's looking pretty exciting as well. Just flip that over, press it again on the back, make sure it's well and truly stuck down. I love to do this kind of applique. I most likely will free motion stitch. So that's all looking pretty good from the back and from the front. And I think that's kind of fun. To me it indicates sort of palm trees that you might find on a wonderful island in the Pacific. How nice would that be to be out there with those? So here I've already got four blocks cut out and ironed on ready for me to do the next stage with. And I just thought that was kind of fun to show you leave your blocks centre. See I've done a whole bit more fiddly cutting here but I did a similar sort of fiddly but cutting away that centre part when I had my shape here I've cut out from the middle as well so that you get um, just a bit more design going on than perhaps on those ones. Um, and as I said, these are fairly simple, but it was to show you the type of thing you can do. You can have so much fun just drawing a quarter of a, or an eighth of a design and then just seeing how it opens out into something even more exciting. So there will be more videos. I'll be coming back to show you how to do something a little bit larger and also how we're going to go ahead and uh, applique and quilt them. So thank you.